bro. Like, yeah, I was ready to like air that shout, bro. Like, uh, I was ready to end up on the news and everything. I hope she watches this because I've never apologized to her for this. <laughs> Schizophrenic Order of the Pissed On. This is the name of a Facebook group that I've recently had the displeasure of joining. There are no preliminary admin questions like other Facebook groups. Literally anyone can join. The group is full of inflammatory posts targeting every single religious group, ethnic group, race, and ideology that you can think of. It is an actual digital gutter full of trolls and baiters that just thrive off of chaos and contention. It's just absolute depravity. Now at the time I was trying to make a video about the red pill community and so I made a post looking for interviewees and the post said I'm working on a project for YouTube seeking to understand the good bad and the ugly of the red pill community would anyone be willing to interview and in parentheses picture to show how serious I am the responses were pretty mixed um, and apparently I look like Theo Vaughn, but not quite as good looking. But in the mash of Theo Vaughn comments and people just commenting the word gay, I found a diamond in the rough. Now he's asked me not to use his real name. He wants to protect his identity. And so we're going by his street name, School. School agreed to do a Zoom interview with me and the call ended up being over 30 minutes long. But long story short, School almost became a school shooter. You know, like you're the supreme human being. And then it, it just goes downhill from there. Like the whole school shooter thing, bro. Like, like I was, um, I, I was close, I guess you could say, you know, like I, I thought about it a lot. What took him to such a dark place and how did he get out before it was too late? I'm gonna tell you, but first I wanna give some context. We've all seen it. Everyone is posting pictures of themselves dressed up in pink with a description that reads something to the effect of, oh my gosh, we dressed up. We had such a great time watching the new Barbie movie. And my husband was Kenuff because he came with me. You're a basic I tend to get a little bugged by social media trends, but they're pretty harmless. It's just people going out, having a good time with their friends and doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. And by following the trend, you get perceived social validation. There's nothing wrong with all the Barbie hype or having a good time with your gals at the movie theaters. But to me, the latest wave of Barbie posts is really just the natural output of a giant information system. A system made of profit-driven social media platforms that are all competing for our attention. Because as it turns out, our attention is worth actual dollars. The people that design these platforms are very, very good at what they do. Almost too good to the point that they've hijacked information distribution and become almost de facto data controllers. And the results are what we would call echo chambers, which are little thought bubbles where your thoughts are bounced around, reinforced and reiterated over and over by like-minded people. In the echo chamber, your thoughts are rarely rarely challenged if they're ever even opposed at all. So think about all your social media feeds, big data algorithms are deciding on what content you should see based on your likes, your dislikes, your browsing history. 68% of Americans use social media as their sole source of news. So now more than ever, the echo chamber is more dangerous. With such massive adoption worldwide, social media is pretty much inescapable. It's addictive, it's engaging, it's among us, and I think it's here to stay. And it's in this modern digital landscape all the way back in 2016 that a lonely teenager found himself in a tough, tough situation. You know, I was in high school. Um, I was a white kid in basically like an all Latino high school. So like, I tried not to be racist, but like, you know, like racism was getting thrown towards me. Then I'd go home, I'd hop on the internet. And then like, I see like stuff that's like racist against them. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I got people on my side. I'm not by myself. You know how like your, your internet shows you what you want to see. So you look up water slides, you're going to get ads for water slides. Well, if, you, if you're searching like some that is like just maybe slightly racist, well, the internet's gonna keep putting that in front of you and then all of a sudden you think that that's how the world is. And how right he is. I just have a quick side story before I get back to him. Back in 2016, I had just returned from Asia where I had served a two-year Mormon mission. You weren't allowed to have phones during literally the entire two years. And so when I got back, I was gorging myself on all things social media, just trying to get caught up. YouTube figured out pretty quickly that politically I was right-leaning. And before long, I was watching tons of 
SJW gets owned type of videos for hours and hours I would watch. And slowly but surely, a change took place in my psyche. The videos were very entertaining. I think as humans, we tend to enjoy watching conflict, but I wasn't actually gaining any tangible political knowledge. And at the same time, I was nurturing a growing resentment for liberals. For a few years, I kept eating whatever YouTube would put on my plate and my anger towards this whole group of people with blue hair that I've never met, it just kept growing and growing until it reached a boiling point at literally the worst possible time. My poor, poor sister on the most special day of her life, her wedding day, made an offhand comment about Donald Trump. And in that moment, because of all the hours of video that I'd consumed, I had been so conditioned to lash out at someone, anyone that opposed my echo chamber driven beliefs. And so that's what I did. In that moment, I no longer saw her as my sister, a person that I've loved for over 20 years. To me, she just became another pathetic liberal that needed to get destroyed. And so I very aggressively called her out. What do you know about Trump? Cite one instance of this or that. You guys generalize Republicans, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. And I ended up making a complete fool of myself. I not only made her feel terrible on her wedding day, I also made a bunch of her soon to be husband's family very uncomfortable. It was just a bad deal. And I attribute it to the fact that I willingly and voluntarily placed myself in a community through videos in the comment sections of a group that supported a thought pattern of liberals are stupid, and liberals deserve no respect. And so when I ran into a liberal, my sister, that's how I treated her. And though I'm still a conservative to this day, I cringe a little bit with embarrassment when I think of how I handled myself on my poor little sis's special day. I hope she watches this because I've never apologized to her for this. <laughs> We've had tons of level-headed conversations since. I love her to death, she's great. But anyways, let's go back to the good stuff. Then I'd go home, I'd hop on the internet, and then like I see like, stuff that's like racist against them did you join like discords that is that kind of where you were going for all that stuff mine was actually ma mainly in facebook groups because back then they were super duper unmoderated bro like you, like you could you could you could get away with like some crazy <laughs> like the 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 world outside of it stops making less sense and like you start disagreeing with a lot more of the real world and it's like the only time where i feel like i'm right or like people listen to me or understand what i'm saying is when i'm in these facebook groups it made me feel like hey like it's okay to be white you know like i didn't feel like it was okay to be white at my high school because everybody like picked on me for it and then i hop on the internet and it's like nah bro like why are you sad to be white like we're the master race you know like like aren't you smarter than everybody in your high school and i'm like well yeah like well you know and like don't they all sound stupid to you yeah and and well you know like you're the supreme human being you know i didn't have any of those kind of feelings back in 20 maybe 2016 and then 2018 like i'm a full-blown racist and i'm using like these terms that like nobody else uses and they don't understand what i'm saying and i keep thinking like and these people know exactly what I'm talking about whenever I use these terms or these slurs and stuff like that. And it's like, no, they don't because I'm a f crazy person who's gone down an internet rabbit hole. You know, that, that's what happens. You're probably asking yourself, how could he let himself get caught up in something like that? But that's just the way it is though. These ideas and these beliefs get bounced around in these communities so often that after a point, it starts becoming normal to them. And as school said, you end up going down a rabbit hole. And it's not as uncommon as you think. In 2007, the Saudi Interior Ministry claimed that 80% of all young Saudis who had been recruited by jihadists in their country had been recruited using the internet. It's super common for ISIS and other radical groups to reach young vulnerable people through social media platforms, like this guy, Justin Sullivan. He grew up Catholic, his dad was a Marine, but after watching countless hours of ISIS propaganda, he reached out to a terrorist recruiter and ended up killing his neighbor with plans to go even bigger than that. And luckily, he was caught before he could. The only reason any of this happened is because he was caught up in a violent information vacuum. I saw it as like a brotherhood. A brotherhood, AKA an echo chamber, where over and over the ideas that violence in the name of their cause was what makes you great. It was like revenge, and you want it to be like acknowledged by Islamic State. You want it to be looked at as like a hero. I want to be remembered, you know. With Justin and with school, just two kids struggling to fit in, both guys just craved what everyone craves, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you have your most basic needs met, you seek love, 
belonging and self-esteem through the respect of others. And because school was lacking respect from his Latino schoolmates, he started to feel like he needed to do something radical to earn it. Why are you sad to be white? Like we're the master race, you know, like, like aren't you smarter than everybody in your high school? The whole school shooter thing, bro, like, like I was, um, I, I was close, I guess you could say, you know, like I, I thought about it a lot, bro, because like, you know, kids would come up to you and just say it, you know, like, oh, you're white, oh, you're the, you're, you must be a school shooter. And then that on top of everything else is kind of just like, bro, you know, like f these guys, you know, let me, let me actually bring a strap to school and let me, let me see how scared they get, you know? And it's kind of sad that people reach this point. And it's sad that social media has created environments where all their negative beliefs can be reinforced. The incel community is another perfect example. Incels or involuntary celibates, also known as black pillars, are people that consider themselves too unattractive to be able to get a woman. At first it sounds kind of funny, but the more you dive in, the more you realize this is a serious thing. There's a giant forum where these guys gather called incel.is. Think of it as like Reddit for incels. And all they do in this community is continuously perpetuate this message of hopelessness. Like this one that cites statistics from the National Child Development Study proving that attractive people have higher IQs than ugly people. Or this post that's basically a giant essay explaining why bullying, peer pressure, rumors, gossip, popular people, clicks, drama, etc. All of that exists throughout life and countless other posts with the same hopeless message that they will never be enough and that some good looking dude is just gonna come take what they can't have. So it's no wonder that guys like Elliot Roger and other popular figures in the incel community like Alec Minasian eventually reached a point where they felt like their only option was to take revenge against society. They both killed and injured tons of people and school was almost at that same breaking point. Yeah, I was ready to like air that out, bro. Like uh, I was ready to end up on the news and everything. And but where these guys acted on their violent ideologies, school was lucky enough to have a realization. The bad part was that realization could only come about because he was addicted to hard drugs. Using drugs, it kind of like, it, it, it numbed me to a lot of the bullying I go through. And also like, I, I guess like eventually, like whenever you just start using drugs enough and like you go far enough down that hole, you eventually get like that hippie community feeling. It's like, bro, like I'm barely making it. I don't care if this guy's black. If he's got some dope, I'll buy it from him, <laughs> you know? And then eventually like, like through something sick and twisted like drugs, I, I was able to kind of realize like, holy bro, like I'm just like this black guy. You know, like I, I've been in like in detoxes and it's like, man, like me and this guy, like, Normally, I would think like the worst of them. It's like, oh yeah, a black guy in a rehab, drug addict, classic. That's a classic black guy right there. But then, like being there, laying in a bed, just adjacent to him, it's like, holy f bro, like I'm just as capable of being just as big of a piece of sh as I thought this guy was, purely just for being black. And then after that, I kind of looked back on it. It's like, f bro, like I'm doing all the things that like I was racist against these black and Mexican people for, you know. Like, I'm running around selling drugs and doing drugs and toting guns like that, committing crimes. And though drugs took him down a dark path of its own kind, it was on that path that he discovered that people are really just people. We're all just seeking to have our needs met. And now he lives every single day with a new mentality. And honestly, it's a beautiful thing to see. I, at my job, I work around a lot of um, Mexican people. A lot of my customers are Mexicans and they don't speak a lot of English. And like back then, I would have been like, who the f is this up in my shop trying to get this doesn't even know what the f he's talking about. You know, I, I, he does speak in English. And now it's like, I'm like taking every opportunity I can to try and learn some Spanish so I can help like communicate with these people, you know? Yeah. And like you start talking to them and you realize like, holy f this guy's just like me. Throughout I mean, history, we've seen people that have become better versions of themselves because they've spent time looking and listening at a different perspective or a different way of doing things. The algorithms will continue to divide and the social media giants will continue to collect money from our voluntary entry into these dangerous echo chambers. At the very worst, echo chambers can lead a person to become radicalized, which can then lead to mass murder and terrorism. But the best case scenario for echo chambers is still not good. Any echo chamber will rob you of creativity, original thought, and the sharpness of mind that comes from having your ideas challenged. But I get it. It's hard to step out. I know what you're going through, bro. Like, I know what it feels like to be alone. I know what it feels like to, to feel like no one else is listening to you. But 
Like, it, it's so much bigger than that, you know? The world is so much bigger than these microscopic communities that inhibit your greatest asset, which is your mind. And the sad part is people will continue to be caught in these echo chambers until we become aware, until we actively seek real experiences in the real world, putting ourselves into contact with different people that have different values. And that's how we grow and that's how we become great. Now, I myself was stuck in an extremely toxic echo chamber for over 10 years, that chamber being called the League of Legends community. I made a video right here about overcoming my addiction to League of Legends. It was a long road, but I did it. Click it, watch it, enjoy it. You're gonna love it, I promise. Godspeed.